Hey everyone, Tim here from Snap Attack. Let's dig into this week's Threat Snapshot. So we're going to be focusing on Quackbot today, uh, also goes by the name Qbot and some other things. Uh, this started out as a banking trojan over a decade ago, and routinely Quackbot appears in malware top 10 lists because, well, quite frankly, they're highly successful at what they do. Uh, they constantly evolve and change their tradecraft and TTPs, and they're just, again, overall really effective, which uh, makes detecting them to be sometimes challenging, and which is why a tool like Snap Attack can really help. So, I'm going to put up point to you at a few references to start. So, um, this is some recent threat intelligence from our partner Vertium. Um, they've seen an increase in Quackbot activity this year, as well as some changing in TTPs. And a lot of this is some of the things that we've been discussing in our previous snapshots, if you've been following the series. So things like how, you know, Microsoft uh, changing the way that macro enabled Word documents and Office documents work. Um, so actors have been shifting to other payloads, uh, including things like malicious OneNote documents, um, which is what this threat intelligence report covers, you know, as well as other, you know, sort of activities. So. Uh, definitely take a look at this. They, um, the Avertium snapshot provides some really good background on the threat actor, um, some of the techniques that they use, as well as you know some of their recent techniques. Um, other good threat intelligence resources. So, you know, CISA is part of their you know stock ransomware campaign and other you know associated malware. Um, they do publish intelligence from time to time. Um, this is a little bit of older intelligence, but was republished recently, or at least disclosed publicly recently. Um, this is from um, Department of Health and Human Services. They have a, a really stellar team over there. And again, they talk through some of the things that they've seen around Quackbot. Um, again, interestingly enough, uh, again, some of the like initial infection vectors, and again, part of why they are so successful is they have a, a lot of tools in their toolkit, a lot of variety. So malvertising and mal spamming is very effective. They've used exploit kits. One of the things they are particularly known for, known for is once they have um, that initial kind of that access and that execution, they will, um, again, use that access to send emails from that compromised victim and basically insert themselves into the middle of existing email chain, which, again, adds some sense of legitimacy. Um, if you're talking to something of somebody about a, a vendor quote and you get a PDF and it tells you you have to you know, click or run this because this is the invoice for it, totally makes sense why you would you know want to go ahead and click that and you know this is you know part of why they've been so successful so again some good threat intelligence you can see a lot of the techniques they use um, commodity tools you know mimi cats a lot of living off the land techniques like powershell you know basic you know sort of you know kill chains around you know having malicious links and zips and you know using you know, living off the land tools, um, which again, very easy to detect. But um, again, it's those chains that are, you know, obviously very disruptive to, you know, a lot of our existing SIMS EDR rules and alone that might not be, you know, necessarily something to alert on because some of these activities are more prevalent. But, you know, together, you know, in a short period of time, these become very interesting. So definitely some good resources. Um, we're actually going to take a look at this specific uh, kill chain here. Um, this is a, a recently observed uh, infection from the last week um, where, again, they're going to have a malicious HTML file. Again, assume the different ways that that can come in, probably through like a malicious email. Um, it's going to download a zip, which is going to have an image, um, like an ISO that's going to be mounted. Uh, again, they're going to use Windows scripting, uh, CMD, PowerShell, and other things to eventually get that malicious DLL that's going to run. Um, and you know, establish their C2 in that back door. So uh, really good technique here. Let's take a look and see what this looks like in Snap Attack. So again, you know, jumping kind of ahead, we figured out we have the sample, it got through, however. So a user's gonna you know, click on that sample in the email. They're gonna see something like this for you know, Office 365. Um, this download is not supported and it's going to ask to download the file. So that zip file is embedded in the HTML and some JavaScript is going to make that download. So Effective here, um, again, it's a password protected zip, so your antivirus is not going to be able to scan inside of the contents there. So, you know, some of the things that they're going to do to evade detection. And we can kind of skip ahead here in the video a little bit to where we're going to actually open up that zip file. And we know there's going to be a, a flurry of activity here. So there is a, you know, disk image in here that's going to open up and mount. There's going to be a shortcut in here on that image. That shortcut is going to launch some things in the background. Again, um, WScript, PowerShell, some other commands. 
uh, we'll take a look at all of those things that's doing, but ultimately this is getting to the point where it's going to, you know, install that DLL on the system and, and launch that with run DLL 32. So um, lots of detection opportunities here, lots of different pieces of this kill chain. Uh, we'll take a look at this over in the process graph here. So not a whole lot from that initial piece where, again, I have something in Chrome and I'm downloading the file. Really, this is all going to you know, start to touch base of when you actually um, open up that zip, um, you mount that uh, image file so we can see here, um, Explore. So when you're opening that image and you're clicking it, um, Explore is gonna be the parent process and this is you know, mapped to that E drive. So kind of like a, you know, a CD-ROM or a virtual image, you know, that's, that's really a good way to indicate that. Um, they do some other interesting things here as part of this campaign. Um, one in particular, they're copying um, both the WScript binary and reg.exe from uh, System32. They're moving it to the temp directory, and clearly they've seen some actors or some, you know, uh, I guess blue teams writing detections where I'm looking for something in the System32 directory, and I have, you know, a, a very specific path where hey, if I just add some other slashes to that command line, um, that's gonna break your detections, uh, which again shows the fragility of some of these things and how easy it is for attackers to evolve. But um, that's that's allowing them still to copy that file, use that in a way, and also evade some detection. So there's there's definitely some, some good things around there. Um, yeah, I did mention they copy reg.exe over and they're gonna use PowerShell to actually, that's how they're gonna pass the base64 encoded command, command to PowerShell. So again, kind of chaining a bunch of these things that together, you know, logically work, but you know, to some of these tools, you know, your Sims, your EDRs, you can fool them because they're not gonna have that context from those different sources, um, which again, ultimately leads into this execution and then some more living off the land. So we see our, you know, CMDs, we see our PowerShells. Um, and things of that nature. So again, this tweet did include some IOCs here, so you can take a look. Um, they did a really good job of extracting all the commands that are executed in that timeline. Um, they have the distribution URLs and the C2. So again, for something that's very recent, um, IOCs are super effective at just seeing like, hey, have I been hit for this? Have I seen any ev evidence of that in, in my environment? So you could take this, you could copy and paste that into our IOC Hunter feature. Um, again, this is an enterprise feature where I can go over here under Intelligence IOC Hunter. This is going to highlight all of the domains, IPs, hashes, all your IOCs. Um, it's gonna automatically extract them and then you can convert these to rules for whatever integration you have and then one click do a search for those. So again, given how rapidly Quackbot you know, changes up their trade craft. Um, these TTPs are gonna be relatively short-lived, which is absolutely why we need behavioral detections, but still definitely something that you can take a look at and just see, you know, is there anything from a recent active infection that maybe I'm, you know, a part of. So definitely good to have that defense in depth. So if we're talking, you know, how can we have some detections? How can we, you know, really, you know, take a look to see what kind of activity we have in our network? Um, one of the things that's been consistent with a lot of their techniques is the use of PowerShell. Uh, specifically, they have that download cradle with invoke web request um, where they're going to be pulling down um, usually a second stage payload, uh, such as that DLL or their command and control. Um, they don't often ship that with the tool because, again, that makes it a little bit more vulnerable to being detected early, especially by, you know, antivirus and things. So um, there's multiple variations of these detections around the download cradle. Um, my personal recommendation is to look um, at a PowerShell log, so like a 4104 event rather than, um, you know, process creation events. Because a lot of times if you're, you know, spawning from PowerShell.exe instead of CMD.exe, you're not going to see the actual commands typed into a PowerShell shell, which becomes problematic for detecting and hunting. Um, these download cradles, though, unfortunately, are very common. Um, you can see here that we have, you know, thousands of them, even in our, like, true positive, you know, very malicious lab data here. So this is something that, uh, again, would need some tuning to really be effective in your organization. Again, looking for things that are downloading the temp or other directories could be interesting, but also um, legitimate tools often use that, too, like uh, certain update scripts and stuff. So probably more suited for a hunt rule than a detection, but um, definitely something that you can see to look for Quackbot and other tools. Um, again, one of the techniques that they also uh, started using that I mentioned is they're copying files from System32, again, masquerading as, as some of those tools are more likely. They're also just using different ways to um, execute those commands without 
um, showing the use. So I'm running regs or I'm using WScript without seeing WScript as that command line. So um, we do have detections around those. That technique is a little less common, but is still something that you can you know, deploy more likely as a alert or a higher confidence detection in your environment. Um, again, that was that example of how they were using xcopy to copy those files out of system 32 here. Um, last one, again, around uh, Quackbot, and we've been seeing um, moreover in general with a lot of threat actors is they are using ISOs and image files and things. Um, sometimes antivirus won't scan those mounted images or just the way that those images are mounted. There might not be as much visibility or telemetry there versus copying it to the hard drive. So because of that, these become a very you know prevalent uh, execution vector. And you know, you gotta thank Windows for making it very easy to mount an image. I remember before you needed a third party utility to do that, and now you can really pretty much just double click it. So, you know, looking for things that are executing, you know, W script, C script, even if they're not named that, but like your JavaScript, your VBS, your other files, um, off of something that's not your C drive is a pretty good high confidence way of looking for this. So those are just a couple of ways that you can detect this activity. Again, because QuakeBot changes up their techniques so often, um, you've got to have some, you know, more generic behavioral detections that can, you know, move higher up on that pyramid of pain, detect those activities, um, because again, their IOCs are going to burn and they even rotate through a lot of their techniques. So having some good coverage across that is going to be very important. So that's our snapshot for this week. Feel free to comment below the video, like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.